Welcome back to another episode of Time Out with Dr. Caleb Stoppel. We'll be right back, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs for their support. Remember, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive consoles and an entire library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let Vital Signs help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments by going to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also call them at 614981 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Let them help you bring your school's legacy to life. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 while also creating the ultimate game day experience in your gym. Go to sidelineinteractive.com to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com and talking to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We want to say thanks to uh, Final Forms, the industry leader in registration. But Final Forms is more than just forms. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it provides schools with compliance, communication, and risk management solutions. Final Forms helps your stakeholders with mobile accessibility, and it has reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms with athletics. Final Forms can also help with team communication and attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this with secure language translation and ADA compliance. It's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to help their teams play better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They've got online tools, smart cameras, and analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, from club and youth programs all the way through high school and college teams, and even the pros use Huddle to help their athletes play at the highest level. You're in good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to say thanks to our newest sponsor, Gipper. Gipper is the way that athletic directors and programs create world-class marketing content. You can create custom branded content for your school's social media channels in seconds. And it is so easy to use that even I can do it. Use any device and create custom world-class marketing content. Go to gipper.com for more information and tell them you heard about it on the Educational AD Podcast. And we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. They sponsor the Athletic Director Toolbox segment on our regular podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack allow you to collect comprehensive data about your program that allows you to evaluate and improve the entire scope of it. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you to the 95% of the parents and the student athletes that really love your program and it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack 
at athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials. And then give them a call or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Time Out with Dr. Caleb Stoppel. This is episode number seven. Uh, we do this every Tuesday. Uh, Caleb Stoppel is a longtime athletic director in the state of Kansas, very active at the state and national level, certified master athletic administrator. And every week he shares his heart and his wisdom with us. So, uh, Caleb Stoppel, what do you have for us on episode number seven? All right. Hello, Jake. Thanks for having me back on. And hello to all the listeners checking in. Uh, these past couple episodes, we've been talking about that transition. Um, for any of any of you who might be or find themselves in a transition of from one job to taking a new job, uh, specifically, we've been talking a lot about that physical transition when you're moving to another city um, to take on that new role. And uh, we've talked about uh, not only how you transition relationships, but then also how you have an exit plan and how you work with that incoming AD. Um, today, we're going to focus on the entry plan. So we, we, we've, we've left our um, our role, you know, hopefully better than we found it. We're literally moving to that new space. And so today we're going to talk about um, from a more of a professional lens than a personal lens, but a professional lens. What do you need to do? What are those first few items that you have to hit the ground running with in your new job, in your new organization? Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, being more strategic than not is going to be essential to be um, really productive and have a successful entry. But we're going to talk about a couple little highlights and a couple little uh, encouraging notes to um, help you on your way if you are transitioning. So when I say entry plan, you know, I hope that brings one or two visuals to mind either a physical plan that you can write down, flip through the pages of, um, check boxes, so to speak, um, or maybe it is more of just a visual in your mind of, okay, hey, I got to have a strategy. I got I to have something that, so I just don't walk into my new job that I've worked so hard to get, and I have to at least appear to look like I know what I'm doing, taking on the job, even though folks that you're going to enter the job with and people you're going to work with should have and will have grace and understanding that you're brand new. And even though you've been an AD before, it's a new organization. There's a new set of procedures that you're going to have to know. There is a learning curve. So the purpose of an entry plan is how you can not only help yourself have some type of plan to how you accomplish the unknown, but how you communicate that plan to others, because as we all know, entering into a new leadership position, communication will be key. And so how do you communicate with the others that you're going to lead, you're going to work with, so that they know what your vision is, what your plan is for learning and taking on new duties. And, you know, despite a learning curve, there will likely be an expectation that you will need to start doing right away. You know, you will need to start making decisions. You will need to start taking care of um, some items that need immediate detention, uh, despite being the new person. So um, the first few things that come to mind when we talk about, well, uh, what is going to be in an entry plan? whether it be physical plan or just on my mind. Well, what are you going to do in your first few days? So that's the first question that you need to think about and answer when it comes to taking a new job is what am I going to do in the first three days, the first seven days, the first two weeks, and even the first month? Um, and, and what are some of those ongoing items that maybe are going to be not achievable um, in the first couple of days of the first month, but are actually monthly tasks that are going to take your repeated attention. 
Okay, so that's the first kind of question you need to ask about. What are those things that I'm going to need to do right away? And then what are those items that you need to set out to accomplish during those same timelines? So the first level is who do I need to meet in those first X number of days? And then the second piece is what do I need to accomplish? Okay. And when you are thinking about who you need to meet and what you need to accomplish, um, I would encourage you to reach out to people within that new organization. You know, just as we've talked about having that exit transition with the incoming person, well, now guess what? You're the incoming person. And I would hope that the organization or the person you are taking over for may have that open mindedness that you were trying to have as the outgoing person to respect you and listen to what your needs might be as the incomer to help provide those um, information pieces, help provide some of that experience and that tidbits of knowledge so that it can help you achieve what you need to know and what you need to do in those first few segments of being on the job. And so it's important to seek those people out. It's important to be receptive of help because remember on the back side of this, there's that outgoing person that is trying to respect your needs and they're waiting for maybe your cue as the incomer on what you need. So it is a little bit of a song and dance here between the two people, yourself and the outgoing. But I think it's important for you as the outgoing per or as the incoming person to be receptive for help and to communicate that. And one way you communicate it is through an entry plan. Okay. So um, who you're going to need to meet and what you're going to need to do in the first few um, days and weeks and months on the job. Um, obviously I'll reiterate this, but you have to prioritize relationships. There will always be to-do items. There will always be emails that need to get out. There will always be, okay, we have this big athletic event coming up that you're in charge of managing and planning for. Okay, so the to-do items will always be there, but you get one shot at a first impression and one shot at your initial meeting with someone to create a relationship. And so that has to be prioritized as an incoming person that has to be prioritized in your entry plan. And so when you're going back to the, who do I need to meet in those first few days, weeks, and months, you have to prioritize that. You have to prioritize that. And I would encourage you to have the, the physical FaceTime with those individuals for that first meeting, rather than sending out an email to those people, sending out, you know, some type of digital communication, especially if it's those people that you are going to work with more on a daily basis, whether it is folks like um, administrative personnel in your office or department, um, whether it is your um, coaches, if you are a building athletic administrator, if you're a district athletic administrator, you know, you are working with daily um, the building athletic administrators. OK, and quite possibly me entering uh, someone like me entering a district position. I'm learning more and more the different departments that the athletic departments partners with and has to rely upon for the smooth opera opera operation of a school organization, a school district organization. And so I'm having to branch out even farther to think about what other departments do I need to partner with? And those individuals are also people that I need to establish a personal relationship with, and I need to meet them face-to-face. -face. So it's so crucial that those first meetings are face-to-face, -face. give that time for those relationships to develop. All right. So we talked a lot about, you know, the need to meet people, the need to, to be pretty strategic about who do I need to meet in the first couple of days versus the weeks? Because remember, kind of like what we talked about um, with an exit plan, your time is valuable. You don't have just this unlimited amount of time to be able to do all these things that you're going to want to do in your first couple of days on the job. And you have to protect your time. This is where coming down 
to a pencil and paper or on a computer, you, you need to actually create a plan. And that is the beauty of having an entry plan and taking those thoughts and those reflective pieces to actually now prioritizing them in a list or in narrative detail. Um, an entry plan is going to be extremely helpful as you transition into a new job. Also, as we talk about uh, the physical entry plan, this is also going to be a really helpful resource as you are pursuing new positions. So uh, we've been talking about this, assuming that you've already, you know, sought after a position, been offered a position, and, and you're going to be in that new position. But what about the scenario where you might be looking for further opportunities? You might be looking for something in a new location. You're moving, you know, for another job. I mean, for another situation in your family. So Having an entry plan as you go into an interview situation is a highly, highly helpful dynamic as well because it communicates. It communicates that you have organization, you have structure, and that you are prepared to hit the ground running in that new organization and will have immediate impact. OK, and so I want to jump in and talk about the entry plan here for for a little bit. So this is no this is no matter whether you are pursuing a job or you already have the job. And now this will help communicate literally what you're going to do on those first couple of days, weeks and months. Um, here are some suggested components of an entry plan. All right. Um, in the beginning of that entry plan, uh, an introduction is really going to be important. It, it sounds a little bit maybe moot that, you know, okay, everything, whether you're writing a, a paper in college or you're reading a book, everything's got an introduction. Well, guess what? An entry plan is no different. And in that introduction, I would recommend um, including a short bio on yourself, you know, a little bit about who you are, where you've come from, um, and definitely the purpose of an entry plan. You know, why are you doing an entry plan? If I'm reading your entry plan uh, as part of an interview committee, then why, why did this person bring this in here? Okay, what is the purpose of it? And then also, I would suggest adding a short personal mission statement. And it doesn't have to be as, uh, you know, uh, clunky as that sounds, but like, why, why are you coming to us looking for this job? Or if you already have the job, what are your goals? You know, what, what are you on fire for to, to help take this organization to the next level? You know, sometimes people call that an elevator speech. You know, so what might be your tailored elevator speech for this organization? All right. Um, after the introduction, you know, you need to think about your first 30 days. So as we were talking before, I was kind of jumping all over the place. OK, the first three days, the first week, the first month. But as you structure this, my my suggestion would be, what are you, you going to do in the first 30 days? And thinking of this as literally a section in your entry plan, that is where you can bullet point out who you intend to meet, maybe what you intend to seek out information on and research within the district. But those 30, first 30 days are going to be crucial. And then, of course, we talked about really the ongoing you know, timeline. What are you going to um, seek to commit to monthly? Who are you going to have monthly meetings with, check-in meetings, things like that? I think that is very important to worth note in the entry plan. And then um, finally, you know, what are some areas of research that you've done some homework in, okay, but you also recognize you're brand new to that organization, and what are some things that you think are going to be worth tackling as a new either building or district athletic administrator that you can communicate to either that interview committee or those individuals you are now working with to say, hey, I've done some research on, for example, um, a, a uniform schedule. And I've, I've kind of looked at some stuff or, hey, I couldn't find a uniform schedule. And I think that that is one of the things that I'm going to create right away seeking some feedback because those, this building or this district needs a uniform rotation so we can be as responsible and efficient with our our district budget as possible when we're ordering uniforms. That's just an example. Okay, but what are some areas of research that you've identified that will be part of your entry plan to either lead your action in those first few days and months or will be part of your presentation to that interview committee 
that has that interview committee saying, wow, this person is the real deal that we need that looked into immediately. Hey, this person might be the right fit for our job. And then the final aspect of an entry plan um, is, a, is a professional portfolio. You know, as this is probably more so for an interview, um, but also could help in a transition that you've taken the job. And maybe it could be something you disperse this entry plan to some of your new colleagues. Could be an opportunity for them to get to know you further, but um, more so for an interview situation, you know, include that cover letter you worked so hard on as part of your professional package, put it in your entry plan, your resume. Put it in your entry plan, okay? Your reference list and your reference letters. Some things that we may not think about because it's just kind of part of the process. You know, you worked hard to put that entry plan together. Include those personal items because that interview committee um, will hopefully take a glance at it. Uh, one last uh, point here. I want to I include a pro tip. A pro tip with this, okay, because I, I love, you know, making professional portfolios. It's something that I've used um, often when I've gone into an interview situation. But as you are making and crafting this entry plan, um, take every detail to the fullest. Okay, you've worked so hard on it. You've, you've um, had a visionary um, outline for what you intend to be your first few days, months, um, and weeks. Um, make sure it looks the part, make sure it looks professional. When you go to put it together and print it out, um, make sure you take that into a, a place to have that printed, you know, an office max, office depot, whatever, get it printed professionally, color, quality paper, get it spiral bound, get a nice clear cover on the front, a cover on the back. Um, I promise you that every penny of that investment will be well received and well um, return to you when, especially when you're that candidate sitting in front of a committee that say, says, wow, this person is the real deal. They are not only a person of detail, but they've gone the extra step to show us the professional they are. And I promise that any individual will look highly upon that. But again, take the extra step with that. Well, as always, really a comprehensive uh, uh, look I was going back through a couple of my uh, transitions coming on board as a new AD. Uh, I remember two of them in particular, uh, the, the head of school, they were private schools, said pretty much the same thing. Uh, you know, the second one was the most colorful. He said, Jake, that athletic department is the Wild West. They need a new sheriff. And um, things worked out very well. We were very successful, great relationships. But for both of those situations, uh, I, I came in much more uh, managing and not enough relational initially. Uh, and it, it's, it's something that I, I wish I would have done. Uh, my final position as an athletic director, where I ended up uh, retiring after several years, uh, I, and I don't know what made me do this, but uh, I came on board during the summer. I said every coach uh, head coach, assistant coach, you name it, about almost 90 coaches, an email, introduced myself. They knew I was coming on board, but I said, hey, please come in the office. You know, I want to meet you. I want to talk. And when they came in, and almost every single one did, uh, the very first thing I said to them was, how can I make your job more fun? You know, what can I do to let you enjoy coaching more? Uh, I wasn't teaching. I wasn't coaching. So I had the time to do a lot of the minutia that had fallen on to their plates, you know, registering athletes and all this stuff that I could do. And so they really, really appreciated it. And I have a, a couple of Hall of Fame coaches. They both told me a few years later, you know, that nobody had ever done that to them in their entire career. And they said it was is probably the most impactful thing that had ever been done. So it made me feel good. I wish I could say, I mean, it wasn't my idea. I didn't think of that on my own. I obviously had heard that someplace, but it underscores what you just talked about, the importance of being relational as you come into that new job with that new uh, set of uh, teammates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, e exactly. Hit the nail on the head. And that's so important to remember, you know, that we're servant leaders first and foremost and we don't know everything. And we're going to have to learn that by having conversations with others and truly being more of a listener than we are a teller. 
Oh, no, absolutely. Great, great advice. This has been a really cool series. And for listeners, if this is the first one you're tuning into, I really encourage you to go back uh, and listen to the previous couple ones and all of them. Uh, Caleb always does a great job. Speaking of that, Caleb, if one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain a little bit more, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I always love hearing from folks and continuing the dialogue that we start here um, on the podcast. Um, the best way would probably be via email. And my email address is K-S-T-O-P-P-E-L at USD259.net. I also love connecting uh, with folks on social media, specifically Twitter. And I can be found on Twitter at, at Dr. D-R Caleb, K-A-L-E-B. Stoppel, S-T-O-P-P-E-L, at Dr. Caleb Stoppel. Dr. Caleb Stoppel, uh, thanks so much for sharing with us today and every week. Um, you know, hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. My pleasure, Jake. As always, thanks for allowing me on. Absolutely. For our listeners, remember, we do this every Tuesday. Um, we also upload all the Zoom videos to the Educational Lady Podcast YouTube channel. Um, thanks for listening today. Come back again next week for Time Out with Caleb Stoppel and just about every day on the Educational AD Podcast. Have a great one. Once again, we couldn't do this without the support of our sponsors. So we want to thank them right now. Sideline Interactive, indoor scoring tables and video boards. They generate funds for your department and create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Uh, you can also call them at 832-786-0302 and schedule a live web demo. We had a Sideline Interactive video score table in our gym, and it was fantastic. It was great, and their customer service is fantastic, too. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. Uh, they have one mission, to bring your school's legacy to life. Our state association, the FIAAA, has a Wall of Fame video console for our state's Hall of Fame, and it is really cool. Uh, once again, their product is fantastic, and their customer service is second to none. Email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com or call them at 614-981-3589. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank Gipper. Gipper is our newest sponsor, and they allow athletic directors to create custom branded content for their school social media sites. It's incredibly easy to use. You don't need any additional equipment. Uh, as I said, it's so easy, even I can use it. Go to gipper.com for more information and tell them you heard about it on the Educational AD podcast. We also want to thank Huddle at Huddle. We Power Sports. As a uh, head football coach, I used Huddle for many, many years. It was fantastic. And as an athletic director, our school was a Huddle school. Our teams and our coaches used Huddle. Uh, the analytics, video, everything was fantastic. Go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing. I never got a chance to use hometown ticketing, but I know enough athletic directors across the country who do use it and they swear by it. It's the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts about how hometown ticketing can help you. Simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. They allow you to collect comprehensive data that helps you evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Send them an email at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Uh, athletic surveys can help you take your athletic program from good to great. And finally, we want to thank Final Forms, the industry leader in registration. Final Forms uh, helps us at the FIAAA with our state uh, conference by handling all of the registration that goes with running a state conference. But Final Forms is more than just registration. Uh, Final Forms can help your uh, parents with mobile accessibility. Uh, it has reminders about policies and about physicals. It can help with team communication and attendance and can also help with eligibility and rosters and all of the reports that come across your desk. To take the next steps, 
go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with the Final Forms team. Thanks again to all of our sponsors and thanks to you as listeners for tuning in to Time Out with Caleb Stoppel and all the features we have on the Educational AD Podcast. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.